Welcome to the Wedco Podcast, where wedding wisdom meets street smarts. We're dishing out all the tips, tricks, and wedding goss to take your wedding to the next level. Time to ditch the formalities and get this party started. Yeah! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wedco Podcast. I'm Togger. And I'm Joel. And we're here at the beautiful Tall Trees Talabudra Valley. And today we have the White Stag crew with us. How are you, gentlemen? Yeah, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, perfect. Well, I mean, we might as well start with like maybe a little introduction to who you all are and um, I guess maybe a little bit of the backstory behind White Stag. That'd be awesome. So whoever wants to go. Yeah, well, I'll start. I'm uh, Drew uh, and this is Bruce and Mick, so brother and brother-in-law. So we've, uh, I've been in the industry for 10 years now. Um, the White Stag, we started in 2020 um, when we saw an opportunity um, to sort of start a bar business um, at one of the wedding venues that we worked at. Yep. Um, so it was uh, something that came across as an opportunity where we saw that we were already at the venue, so mm. they had to do BYO alcohol, needed RSA staff, so we started a horse float bar business, um, which has been a sort of great way to start what we did and, uh, you know, we led to what we're doing now. Was it always a plan where you are now? Was that always a plan from the start or it just kind of started with the bar and then it's just kind of spread out to what you are now currently doing? I think, I think Drew and I started it more as a, a side hustle, to be honest, back in the day. I think Drew was working, um, Drew was obviously working at a, another venue, um, which was a horse start. And when we started it, we were just kind of, initially, we were both working other jobs at that time. So we were kind of just plugging a gap and, and started it from that perspective. And then obviously, I think it's, it's been fairly initially uh, was very successful and, and we saw a, a big opportunity to expand. Okay. Yeah. And so like venues that you, okay, hey, let's, where is the white stag at the moment? Like, can you like, what's, because a lot of people within the industry, they like we met and it was, it was a bar at that stage. And then it's kind of definitely has expanded from that point. Where are you today? Like what does white stag offer? Like what is the service you guys provide? Yeah, so as Drew and Bruce mentioned, it started as a as a, a mobile bar float, and and that's that allowed us to get into those venues, and, and I, I suppose get a bit of oversight into some specific venues, um, and and actually see what's happening. So, obviously, being available on a on a, a wedding evening, uh, afternoon and evening, you you see a lot of what's going on. Yep, we've always been very. Um, purposeful in our approach with other vendors that are on site as well. So we'll have conversations with them. And over time, we sort of sensed that um, there was opportunity for us to get involved in a few other areas as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, we've worked, Drew obviously started at Royston House. Um, yep. Then uh, Rosewood Estate came along and he was helping the owner there. That surfaced a few opportunities for us to just have a bit more of a tighter um, conversation with the venue owners. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and really what that looked like was, was initially just helping them out with some of the operational day-to-day -day stuff. They had some questions, they came to us. We, we felt we could offer some, some value to them there. Yeah. yeah. And that really just sort of mushroomed from there in terms of what we, information we provided to them, the support we were able to provide, but we identified a bit of a, I suppose a gap there, if you want to call it that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in terms of the White Stag, obviously the bar was still operational, still, still being booked out for various, various events. Um, but the focus sort of started to shift yeah. away from the bar as the priority, more into, okay, how can we, how can we provide services to the venues themselves? Like, yeah. even we were, how, how does that communication go? Because like, you know, we've been shooting at venues forever. And like, I, I can't imagine, like say I had a, a mobile bar and I was offering that service to a wedding. I can't imagine then getting in front of the owner and then being like, hey, we've got this bar, but also we can do this, this, this. Mm. So it's like that, even that conversation, I feel like would be pretty amazing. Yeah, it's, it's funny that the, the conversations um, for us have kind of come about fairly organically. Yep. We've always been, and I think this is where the White Stag has been successful. We have a very shared um, sort of ethos in, in being very collaborative, very open with how we communicate. Yep. We'll freely pass information over to a vendor, to an owner, to a bride, to whoever's, whoever we're talking to. Yeah. Yep. Um, and those, those conversations with the owners, it's not necessarily been strategic or, or a direction that we've gone, we must go in that direction. Mm. It's, very, it's very much come around through us just engaging with them, yep. establishing a, a quick rapport with them, realizing they had a need, and mm. then us realizing, well, we, we, can, we can fill that need for them. Yeah. Um, and that's led to more conversation with other venues. Once people 
have uh, seen what we're doing at other venues, the phone started to ring for us. Yeah. Hey, we have a venue we could do with some help. Um, yep. Or we're looking for this specific service. Can yeah. you help? I think it was comfortable for me as well because I'd done it for six years yes. as a job. Yep. Yeah. Um, I worked for somebody else, but it was the same role. Yes. So when I saw opportunities with the owner, I just had discussions with them about what I'd done previously yep. that then led to, do you want to do a couple of days a week to then you know, leading into, do you want us to help you? And there's different jobs we do for different venues we customize yep. it so that you know if they need help with one thing yes we'll just do that but okay. if they need whole full management yep. we can do that as well that's what i was going to ask uh, like what what oh sorry Johnny, I, I, I was just going to say like I, I think it's good that you offer like that uh uniqueness per venue because no two venues are the same and it's like you know a venue might provide everything you know down to the tableware and things like that catering all that but then some are just like full diy you just you rock up to the venue and just so it's like yeah, no two wedding venues are the same. Um, I think it's just crazy that you guys like transition from a bar, like Steve was yeah, saying, yeah. From, from being a bar <laughs> staff kind of, not bar staff, but like operating the bar and then, you know, essentially like helping plan people's weddings and uh, operating that sort of side of things. What's the main, okay, so say, how many venues are you, like, are you, are you teaming up with them? Are you collaborating, managing? Like, how do you guys define that? So we, at the minute, we, we, we work um, formally with five venues. Um, Amazing. And it's fair to say every single one of them, completely different. The arrangement yeah. we have with them is same but different in as much that, take Tall Trees, for example. It's a very unique venue. It has some unique aspects to it. Um, the owners themselves have some unique or, or some areas where they need specific support. Yeah. That's what we provide. Other venues have owners that have got certain areas covered. Cool. And we help them with, with, with other bits and pieces. So... Um, we kind of like that model because it's not a cookie cutter yeah. approach with each venue. Um, the skill set we have within the three of us, you know, we look at we look at each opportunity with a different lens, which yes, for us definitely. is really, it really helps us filter um, quickly where opportunity is for each venue. And because we each have a different approach as well, we can, we can each have a really good, robust conversation about what is the opportunity. Yeah. Are, are we just doing this because it's another another venue to help, or, yeah. or can we add some real value here? But six, uh, sorry, five we currently support. We've got another couple um, that are probably coming online this year as well, but we're, we're having other discussions with others as well at various stages. Is it, um, is it like a number that you guys kind of want to get to or is it kind of open-ended? That's a great question. And we've, we've sort of bounced a few 50. numbers around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, look, one, uh, there's a perfect question really because the way we've designed our systems uh, and, and processes is, is for scale. Yes, okay. So we can scale quickly. Yeah. Um, or slowly, but but we're really looking at being able to scale to the point where um, we may have venues that are in different locations that we're not necessarily physically at. Yeah, cool. The services we can provide have reach. Awesome. Yeah. Um, we've very much traded on our ability to be hands-on, personal service, you know, face-to-face -face with our with our venues. Yeah. Yep. Um, the owners, clients vendors etc etc so that's how we started yeah what so we've it, realized almost, is, it almost sounds like it's oh sorry it almost sounds like it's moving towards like a tech based you know half based company where like you've got so much tech involved if you do want to spread out mm. you kind of like with all these systems you've got is that is that a background for one of the three of you or is that just for the tech side you get other people on board to help build that part out i think mick and i have both come from tech backgrounds but um, Mick, Mick is definitely very process driven and, and background driven when it comes to uh, automation and uh, improving processes. I think Drew and I often focus more so on, uh, like our focus historically has probably been more on customer support. And I think Mick's brought in a lot of the amazing processes and a lot of the, the tech side of the White Stag, um, which has helped us scale and help us grow to where we are. Yeah, and I think awesome. I think obviously credit to Mick because I know from Drew and I's perspective, although I'm in the tech industry, a lot of the, or have been in the tech industry, a lot of the processes and things that Mick has brought in has just been from his prior experience. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what does this full, what does a full management service look like for YSAC? So say you're going to a venue and like we're doing it all. What does that kind of encompass? 
So first inquiries would come to us, so okay. email response, yep. so a couple looking for a venue. Yep. Um, and we only deal with that client for that venue. So they come yes. to us and we respond as if we are the venue. Uh, um, you know, so a lot of the stuff's behind the scenes okay. um, representing the venue, although we are the white stag, you yep. know, it's all on their platform and their, their site. So... A lot of people didn't know that I did what I did for a year and yeah. I was working the bar and I was like an undercover boss. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. I remember, was, I remember uh, doing a wedding with um, Bronwyn from Scenic Grim Bride and you were the coordinator and she's like, oh yeah, Drew. And I was like, who's Drew? And then all of a sudden, I think I did like five with you and I was like, all right, that's Drew. <laughs> yeah. And look, I freelance for Bronwyn um, and, and have worked and I coordinate. So that's something yep. that I personally think that I specialize in is yep. coordinating. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's again, another way that, you know, we started doing what we did. We saw that there was opportunity to freelance for others or yes. coordinate ourselves. It yeah. doesn't matter what brand we're working for. It's yep. about getting the right thing for the client and the owner. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, you've already brought different things to Steve. Steve and I, when we're at weddings, um, remember, remember how you set a, a timer for when 10 Man, minutes before you tell something? Trade secrets. <laughs> he does that yeah. every wedding. I'm like, yeah. Ooh, bride prep's finishing soon. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, bro, get off your phone. And he's like, I'm setting up my timers. Yeah, look, I do use my watch as my run sheet. It's so so I don't use a clipboard and walk around. Yep. I am looking at my watch. I get a five minute warning that the next thing's coming up. So yep. I do have a good memory, but it's, it's not that good. I definitely you use a bit of technology to, to help me. Well, that bit out sure. if you don't want anyone to know the trade secrets. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I knew you were going to say that. Like, oh, oh, I've been living by it now. I've like, got to make sure the phone, like, uh, all the watches are charged and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. good to go. Yeah. Um, so then as far as like expanding, like I know like you kind of, you're scaling the business. Um, what are, what's the difference? Like, so are all, actually, good point, your venues that you have on board now, are they all pretty local to the Gold Coast, Tweed, Brisbane area? And, and scenic room, scenic, scenic room. room. Yeah, okay, sure. cool. And so, like, obviously, you're. I mean, I feel like one of your strengths is actually going and speaking to venue owners and the rapport building that you guys have. Uh, is that something you would still do? Say, you know, in the future, you're going to open or you're going to partner with a venue down in the Hunter Valley or something like that. Do you think you'd still be on the grounds, creating those partnerships there before you're able to build that out? I think. Um I think the, the sort of the cluster of venues that we currently work with has come through, as I mentioned, it's fairly organically. It's yeah. been an opportunity that's presented itself. We've either been at the venue, we've been introduced to the venue, um, or the owner's called us. Yep. So that, ge that geographical sort of spread is kind of is comfortable for us. We, yes. We've not, one thing we haven't done yet really to, to any great degree is gone on an offensive marketing campaign yes. to grab new venues. Yep. Yeah. We, we've been very cautious, or not cautious, but we've very measured in how we've sort of grown our processes for that scalability aspect. We don't want to grow too quickly and then suddenly yeah. have a whole bunch of issues to deal with. Definitely. So the systems we have in place allow us, they've allowed us to scale at, at a pretty comfortable pace for us. Yep. Um, and really are now, what, is, what do we actually do as, as yeah. a business? And what services can we offer? And, and equally, what services should we offer? Yes. So that piece around other venues, um, probably towards the end of this year, we'll, we'll, we'll have a better understanding about what that looks like. Yep. We'll have a bit more maturity in our systems, our processes, um, to be in a position to maybe approach venues that are a bit further afield. Yes. What that approach looks like, we're not quite sure yet, but, yeah, uh, okay. but it'll be same but different. Um, yep. We think one of our strengths is um, having good open conversations with owners, uh, it's also fair to mention we've we've said no to a few venues as well yeah, okay. who've come at us because for various reasons um, there's no point in us just grabbing a venue that just for the sake of it yep. and, and collecting a fee for doing a service for them unless we can deliver tangible value to the venue owner yep. uh, generally that'll come in through sort of return on investment for them yep. and also um, a, a really great experience for the couple who are booking there if we can cover those two bases We'll, we'll carry on having a conversation with a venue. Yeah, fair. And if we can do that from a distance, fantastic. Yeah, yeah perfect. Maybe you just need to have some more brothers or sisters so you can kind of spread <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah. Got more. plenty of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, got, we got a big family, that's for there sure. There we go, but we can spread out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more, Just every, every five yeah. venues, there's another three that joins. Yeah. But we will grow the team. Yeah. We will yeah. have yeah. to at some stage. So this stage is the three of us. Yeah, cool, I was um, going to ask. But not all full-time as well. So I work on a farm two days a week um, in my, my days off. Yeah, okay. um, and, you know, Bruce and Mick do some other things as well. So yep. it is uh, about growing as we grow so that, you know, we can still give that 
personal service yeah. that we, we offer. We, we never really want to compromise on quality. I think that's what we've been big on from day one. Like the priority has always been the bride and we'll go above and beyond on the day to make sure that they have had a special day. And same with venue management, making sure that if we are looking after that venue, that we go above and beyond to theoretically do things out of scope just to make sure that that experience is top notch. And I think that's what we've built our brand on from early days is people speaking about the quality of, the, of work that we've done or referrals from brides about the service on, on the day. Yeah. Um, it's all about, yeah, essentially uh, exceeding their expectations. Yeah. It feels For very sure. similar to the podcast. Like, so you guys are talking about doing everything behind the scenes and like you're working on behalf of the venue. We're very similar with the podcast where we have our own brands, but we really want to make sure we're not doing the podcast to yeah. push our brands because I feel like as soon as you're doing that, it just, people see through it straight away. Um, and yeah, like when we're talking about you and like the venues, how do you go about like, okay, so a bride comes through and they want to book at Rosewood Estate, Tall Trees. Um, then uh, you, do you have like a full like wedding planning service or like how does that go? Like say they book and you're like, cool, that's awesome. We did that for the venue and we've booked the venue. And then do you hand them like another list of like here are different supplies that we recommend or mm. this is services that we provide on top of this? So on our initial email, they'll yep. get a preferred supplies list yep. from the venue. Okay. Yep. So straight away they can do their own research and then on the viewing, yep. we will recommend other planners, other stylists, other coordinators, other bars. Yep. So, like you, for so us, you give them the preferred supplier list before they even book anything? Of course. Yeah. Because you, you research say, you, is key. Research is key. So yeah. if they can go and work out how much a wedding might cost or they love a yep. certain videographer, photographer, that's going to help them make their decision yep. when they're there. So yep. You say of course though, but I don't feel like it is of course from <laughs> probably anyone else. <laughs> no, I feel no, like no, everyone's no. like, I'll give you my information if you book with me. Give me, give me some money. Like kind of like then, uh, then I'll give you everything. You know? <laughs> I think, I, think the, I know from working at, uh, at Royston, like when we were doing viewings, like I actively encourage people to look at other venues. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think that's where you build trust with customers yes, and definitely. confidence with them. They don't feel that pressure as though they have to book here. If, you, if you're opening up other options, like they're at ease. And I guess that's where you're winning trust and where, where someone feels comfortable is where they generally yeah. want to typically get married or yeah. if they're going in and they're feeling the pressures of someone like, no, you have to book here. This is the only option. Then they're never going to, they're never going to want, in my opinion, they're never going to want to proceed. Yeah, it feels too salesy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And same with bars. Like we have a bar and I'll actively recommend other bars when people are speaking to me that I know will do a good, a yeah. good job, but they might be after a different style. They might be after something that we don't offer. And there's some amazing Water. people in the industry <laughs> that can help. <laughs> I think there's a, there is a, Oh, we suspect anyway. There's there's a little bit of misconception about what what the white stag actually does. You know, yep. because we are known for profiling ourselves at a venue. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's there's perhaps a misconception that we, you know, we're the gatekeepers for that that yes. venue, and we're, and we're and we're you know, hoarding all the business, so to speak. Genuinely, not the case. We, yep. we, as as I've mentioned before, um, the venue comes first. So if we've got a client looking to book the venue. That that venue booking comes first. Yes. Yeah. Um, we've we've shared the information in terms of vendors and whatnot, but we openly um, will recommend uh, other, you know all planners, stylists, bars, yep. whatever. Yep. The, the 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 focus for us is get the team right for that for that couple. Mm -hmm. yep. Sometimes it's really obvious who you perhaps pick. Yeah. So, um, but I think there's maybe a misconception that we're sucking all the business out of that venue. It's 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 genuinely not the case. Yeah. Our our priorities book that venue. Um, most of the time that is the case. There will be an opportunity where if we have built up a relationship with them, coordination, which, which Drew's exceptional at, yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll come up in conversation. So it's a nice sort of hand in glove fit. Yeah. But it's not a, we're not running them through a sales pitch of, right, the venues be brilliant. Let's get them yeah. on coordination. Let's get them on yeah. the bar. Genuinely yeah. not the case. It's, um, we want that team who's there on the day yeah. to be the right team. Yeah. And if that is another bar, I mean, even if it's another coordinator, yeah, totally fine. So it's kind of like it started from like your main focus, like you said, was looking after venues. And then you've kind of, like you said, uh, you kind of found that niche in the gap. Uh, and then you're like, cool, we can offer this service. But also that's not like our priority. Like our priority at the time is venues and stuff. It, yeah. So the way that I look at it is venue first, yep. then the client. Yep. And then all the guests. Yep. But in that, you then have to look after the vendors. Yes. 
So like educating clients on different price points from yep. vendors, like catering can go from $40 a head to $150 yep. a head. If you just look at that on paper, it's really hard to go, yes, that it, you, you need to know what the service is, how many Definitely. staff are going to be there, what, what your expectations yep. are. So like the more information we have, the better we can on sell vendors. Yes. Um, so we try and tell them if, you know, if you're looking for a florist, it, you know, what's your budget? And it's the hardest thing for people to sort of say, yep. one, they either don't know or two, they're not willing yep. to share it. Yeah, for yep. sure. We're not doing it because we're trying to get yeah, that yeah, in yeah. to try and make the most money. We're doing yeah. it so that we can go, well, I think this florist would be a really good fit yes, for you. Exactly they do right. amazing work in, in this price range. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, until they know, it, it's all about just trying to give them some That's a really interesting point. Because, uh, like, I've definitely found that myself with my business where, um, you know, we want to get that information from the client of, like, what's your budget? And I almost feel like they perceive that as being like seedy. Like well, they always like, get you, you know defensive I mean? like, about it. And it's like, no, no, no. Like, I just want to know what your budget is. Cause like if I'm charging uh, nine grand for photo video and you're at eight grand and that's, a, that's the maximum that you want to spend. Well, maybe like if I just sent you my price guide and you saw it was nine grand, then you're going to be like, they're out of my budget. I'll go somewhere else. But then it's like, we can provide, it's, you know, maybe I can do an eight hour package or like customize something for you. Um, so it's interesting. Like I'd, I guess I'd never really thought about it from like higher up out of myself, I guess, like with catering and, you know, things like that. a lot of the venues we work out of like blank canvas. Yeah, so okay. it's, yes. you get the venue hire for a couple of days with accommodation yeah. and then a marquee or whatever it, it may be. So if they can't afford everything they want, yeah. the venue's not right for them. Yes. Yeah. So it's about making sure that they're going to get the wedding that they want yep. and, and realize what they're doing. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, will start with a budget and it'll increase and go o over. Other people will be like, this is how much money I'm doing. And yeah. we just try and help them on their journey to go, you know, yes, that's possible. Or I've seen couples do this. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we're, we're dealing with a lot of weddings yeah. a year. Yeah, exactly right. We see what works, what doesn't. And we also see how much people are spending. Like a lot yeah. of couples will share it with us because we go and ask them afterwards, like, you know, how much did you spend on your wedding? And, yeah. you know, we can then pass that information on to others to help them. Yeah, for what, sure. What's like the average number? Would you know? Like, I know that's such a big question, oh. but like for, uh, for, for, for couples that want to get married, like everyone's like, oh, I want to spend 15 grand. Like I got married. I got married for like, I think it cost me like 17 all up. And that's <laughs> not doable these days. If it like... Look, I think most people would be spending between 50 and 75,000. Yeah, yeah. At a lot of the venues that we work at, but it's you know, it's like a hundred person wedding somewhere around that mark. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, that's with quality food, and yes. you know, they're not say you know they're spending big ticket items. Yes, for sure. So, um, but we've had weddings spending up to two hundred fifty thousand at the same location. Right. Yes, so for sure. So you can go from thirty thousand to two hundred. Yeah. Yep. It's just what you prioritize. Yes. You know, are you a foodie? Is music important? Yeah, like, exactly. Are you having a nine-piece band? That's not going to be cheap. Yeah, yeah. But you can also play a Spotify playlist if you want to. Yeah. But it's going to be a different result. It's a different experience, for and sure. a different experience. I think we've done, like, one of the, well, the favorite weddings that I've done is probably a, a wedding that's been under 20K. Like, it's, there's no cookie cutter, that's what your wedding's going to yeah, be. It's 100% sure. tailored to the couple. It's the the guests often are what make a wedding. Yes, if you have definitely. fun friends, you're going to have a fun day regardless if you're at a shed or if you're at an amazing venue. It's, yeah. At the end of the day, it's what the, the couple are willing to put into it. And we're obviously just there to, to pitch ideas, but it's, there's no cookie cutter mold. Like I'd have Absolutely. the hundreds of weddings we've done. I, I can honestly say that I don't think I've been to one that was even remotely similar to yep. the one that I was at prior. It's, it's always different vendors. It's, it's different styling. It's different the way they orchestrate the ceremony or, or whatever it may be. There's always different touches. And like, we always try and pick it. Like we'll be at a wedding and we'll kind of get to reception and we see like a table full of like all friends all family and we're like oh it's going to be a good dance yeah. <laughs> and then it's like nothing yeah. like, what and then like there's one where it's just all family and they're all you know yeah. all older and it just goes off yeah. and like yeah. you can't pick it it's no, just like yeah like, like yeah. there's no formula to like what's yeah. going to be this banging wedding yeah like, no one of the hardest spend. things we always get asked is how much alcohol do we supply because yep. yep. it's BYO yep. Yep. and the only people who are going to know that is the couple <laughs> yeah. because you do not know. And like we've been at a wedding and opened the cold room and there's been four cartons of beer 
and you know for a hundred guests yeah. and you, you're just going that's just for dad we're like, <laughs> we're like where's where's the alcohol and they're yeah. like that's it and yeah, we're yeah. like oh we're gonna have to get more yeah and they don't even finish it yeah okay. and then we get other ones we open the door <laughs> and it's like you can't 50 get it <laughs> yeah. and you're going there's no way they're gonna get close yeah. to this <laughs> and you know kick on. And yeah. they, <laughs> they do yeah yeah um but it's something you know we definitely recommend <laughs> alcohol calculators <laughs> and talking to dan murphy's to yeah. to get some advice there on how much alcohol to purchase at a byo venue is yeah. do dan's do that yes oh, right. they, oh, cool. they offer that as a service oh wow oh, amazing Awesome. So most of our couples will um, directly talk to Dan Murphy's and then they'll deliver the alcohol straight to the venue. Oh, oh no awesome. joke. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, I just assumed something different to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I guess the bar people know that information. Uh, coming back to venues, do you, guys, uh, do you find a conflict of interest having like some of your venues are pretty close together mm. um, and you do have a lot of venues obviously approaching you because you are doing a great job? Do many of them feel like there is a conflict of interest between or they are different enough that there isn't? Yeah, it's a good question. So, and it's a little anomaly we started to notice once we got a few more venues coming on board. So, you know, with the inbound leads that we get for across the venues, I mean, this year to date, this financial year, I think we feel that about 3,000 inbound leads across the, the venues out. that we have. Um, we'll see a couple pop up at a couple of, yep. couple of different venues. So... And the way we've dealt with that with our venue owners is, is, is again, very open and honest. If they've come, uh, they've inquired at, the, at your venue, yep. that's, that's where our priority lies. If they then, if we get a no from them for that venue for whatever reason, yep. that's when we, we can potentially have a conversation around, well, you're looking for this, maybe a price point or a style. Yeah. How about this venue over here? Yeah, um, yep. And we might, we might try and move them into another venue. Yeah, okay. But again, it's very, it's very transparent what we do with the venue owners in terms of where that leads come in. Lead... Priority yep. is where did it come in? Yes. Let's let's get as quickly as possible to a yes, no, or whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, that let's try and convert that lead somewhere. Yeah, is, exactly. Is, is our approach. And I yeah. feel like that conflict's gone. Like it's not like it's coming through White Stag website and then you're pushing yeah. it out to venues. Like no. it's it's organically coming to those venues Completely. anyway. Yeah. And then you're just kind of yeah putting the best foot forward for each of the venues. Essentially, and we, we certainly have no bias. Like we're we're never going to push someone towards one venue. Yeah. If yeah. they've come to another, it's we'll we'll give them the all all inclusive experience when they they come here or wherever they have inquired. And yeah, I think that's an important sort of jump in. I think it's an important sort of um, message. It runs right through everything we do. That conflict thing. We don't. We purposely don't take kickbacks from any vendor because we're in the we're yeah. in the venues yeah yeah so yep. i mean we're getting the inquiries first yes so we do get approached by vendors can i be on your vendor list yeah can yeah, i yeah. offer some kind of incentive to be put forward yep. we we which makes it really hard for vendors approaching us because yeah the leverage is gone we yeah, we, yeah, we don't sure. take kickbacks yeah um our, our preference is just to be right fit yep for, for that for that couple yeah and for the venue yep um so that, that conflict thing is very transparent with us through yes. every sort of interaction that we have. Do you, do you mind me asking, like, is it like, is this business commission based with the venue or is it like a yearly fee that they pay to have your services on? Like, how does that like structure work if you don't mind yeah, me asking? Yeah, great question. So if every venue has a completely different arrangement with them and, and a, yep. some of them are commission based. Yep. Some of them are, it's fee based. So yep. for the, the fee for service, if you like. Yep. Some of them is a bit of a mix of both. Okay. Uh, it very much depends on what is... What, what they your, need. Where yeah. do they need support? Yes, yes. yes some of sure. them is just inquiries. Well, yep. I just need someone to answer inquiries. Yep. I don't have time to respond. Can you do them? And away you, and, and, we'll, and we pay a fee for that. Yep. Um, others is, is uh, as you mentioned, a, a commission for a booking, yep. uh, booking someone in. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so we have a bit of a... I suppose it's a hybrid model to some degree. Yes. Yep. Um, but we look at the opportunity and we work with them. What are you trying to achieve? Yeah. What are we trying to achieve? Yes, yep. there's an opportunity there. And yeah. I guess it is such a data like driven industry as well. And like being across the amount of venues that you guys are across and as a build, you're gonna get more and more data. So I guess that's even more information for a venue. You can say, well, you know, like these other 10 venues without naming them, they're doing X amount of weddings and you're only doing this and there's gotta be a reason why. Yeah. Um, like just the data that I guess you could provide to the owners of the, the venues would mm. be amazing, just that. Yeah, for me, that's one of the exciting parts of, of, of business, really, is that, is, that, um, is that data side. You know, yep. I think for us, we, we see that as a... It's not, it's not data we necessarily dive deep into just now, yep. but the ability to have 
information coming our way. Yep. I think at a point puts us in a position where we can add real value uh, or increase that value back to back to venues yeah. around here. Here's what's happening in the industry. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we're already fielding calls and we've had a couple of meetings from people who just want a bit of knowledge about what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Just last week we met with a, a, a vendor just looking for a bit of information about what what's happening yeah. Yeah. In, in the industry. So yeah. we've got a bit of a subset of data that we can pull yeah. from immediately. Yeah. Not something we monetize at the minute, but yeah. um, it's yeah. almost useful like to have. Your business gets more valuable as it is anyway, but like as it expands, that gets more and more value because yeah. of the amount of venues that you are across as well. Correct. Yeah. I think it's important as well as um, when the owners are quiet, they might panic that something's going on or Definitely. they're like, oh, we're doing something wrong. Yep. But if we know there's four venues and inquiries have all slowed down, yep. we can give them the confidence to say, it's just it's okay. this time, yep. like it'll pick back up. Definitely. So from Christmas through to end of February, the inquiries were just going crazy. Yep. And it's always that time of year. It's like after Christmas, it's Valentine's Day yep. that we see that. And now it's sort of dropped down a little sure. bit and it's not as busy, but then it'll pick back up. So being in a position where we can say, look, we're seeing this across all the venues. Board. And we also talk to vendors when they're there and ask yep. questions. Yeah. Like we're not being nosy. We're just wanting to know like, yeah. what is happening? Are, yep. you, are you guys doing okay? Like, yep. are you busy? Yep. Are you, and just trying to find out more information there. If we can help people get them more work, that's yeah, yeah. sort of what we're trying yeah. to achieve. It's definitely like a hot topic at the moment. Like even we were at a shoot yesterday and we would, at the end of the shoot, we were talking to everyone and it was just like, became the very popular topic at the end was just like how are you for this year how are you for next year like are you getting inquiries it like it's like uh, like you said uh christmas Ju uh, J january kind of time i i think i got like 30 inquiries in like two weeks whereas normally i'd only get like about 30 a, a month um it was just like boom and then it's like oh i didn't see any for the next month and then you're like oh that was when i put my prices up so i'm gonna drop my prices <laughs> and so you can kind of get in your own head of like maybe i'm not doing a good enough job in the business and all, all this stuff and then all of a sudden inquiries go back up and you're like oh like if you're if you're doing this again most of us probably are doing this on our own because we're sole traders and whatnot if you're on your own you feel very isolated you you've only got the data that you I know think it's, a re it's a really interesting point you know and maybe it's another podcast for you guys down the track but but using using data to make decisions yeah you yes. know we're, we're very big on that um we're it's very humans. easy to make a decision based <laughs> on what you think's happening yeah for um, sure and it could be the wrong decision yeah yeah, um, yeah definitely. definitely you know so it's it, use good data whatever yeah. you're collecting whatever the metrics are you're tracking yeah yep. look at it so what are you guys kind of seeing like i, I was i was talking to you before you were saying that it's you know, been a bit of a weird start to the year, but like, what are you guys kind of seeing over the board of all five venues? Well, I think that from COVID, like that was obviously a really yeah. strange time, yeah. but we were noticing people were turning up and booking on site or within 24 hours because yeah. yeah. they didn't know when they were going to get married mm -hmm. or they didn't know what was happening. I think now with the way, you know, the world is they're taking a lot longer to make their decisions yes. so we've got some couples coming back six months after they viewed yep. and they viewed either multiple venues or they've gone yes we've made a decision now we'll we'll book yep. and we're like oh we we thought yeah they were, that they lead was cold a long gone. time ago yeah. <laughs> that's, well, that's a fair back. point i've never like unarchived leads i'm like they're gone they're dead in the water <laughs> and then all of a sudden like coming on back three but months I think, later I think with gone. the way the world is at the moment obviously with that it's completely different site like tangent but in the the way the economy is at the moment and yeah interest rates and yeah. affordability like at the moment interest is probably people don't feel as safe with their money so yeah. interest probably is slipping off slightly across not only this industry but the majority of small business inquiries are starting to slip yeah, yeah. for sure we we're talking about that yesterday i feel like almost like as soon as there's a drop in interest rates i feel like everyone will be like oh yeah. and like and kind of breathe again and then yeah. it's just going to start pumping again they'll still be poor because i just get married now. <laughs> <laughs> um do you guys have an ideal venue like as far as like Someone, I, I've we've just started up a new venue. It's a Wedco venue. Um, <laughs> what would be the ideal venue for you guys taking on as a client? I might just jump in really quickly on that because I want to just pick out, and this is this is not scripted at all, but genuinely the venues we work just with just now, um, the owners are just fantastic. Yeah. Yep. So when the when the venue owner gets it, yep, um, is is open and collaborative like we are. Yep. The relationship is just far more fruitful. Not not. Not financially, just yep. the whole experience is a lot better. 
So honestly, the, our ideal venues that we work with just now are, are the ones we work with. Yeah, just good the people. The owners are just good people. Yep. Yeah. Um, and that owner aspect as well is an important one as well. A lot of the venues that we work with, the owners are doing viewings themselves. Yes. So the couple get to, to meet the owners. Yep. For us, that's a really important factor because they just, they get that love. They get that, yes. you know, they're invested in the property. They, they know it intimately. Yep. And that helps for us. So the, the ideal venues, are genuinely the ones we work with just now. Yeah. But it's that owner for the, any other venues down the track. The owner is where we start, really. Yep. Okay. Can we, can we have a, a good, robust conversation? Can we be honest? Is anyone hiding anything here? Or, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and if we, if we can get on well with them, fantastic. Yeah. It's yeah. a much easier business relationship. Yeah. Like when I look at your business, I think of like I come from like a commercial photography background and like, I deal with like a lot of agencies and production companies and everything like that. And I look at it and I'm like, well, if you have like 10, you know, venues on board, all of a sudden are you then doing like, well, we're doing social media for everyone and you're building out teams in all these different aspects. Are you, do you do like, like as far as, okay, you're taking on the leads with, within uh, emails and everything. Are you doing social media for people or like how does that side of things go? Or is that just all the venue take care of that? The venues generally will take care of that. So, yep. it, it, and, and again, that's another really important part as well. That's another aspect we look at from a venue. So if we're approaching yep. the venue and we're saying, right, well, we, we want to increase uh, revenue for you and bookings yep. Yep. and ultimately make it a profitable venture for you. Yep. That social media is a huge piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Um, without it being strategic and, and regular, um, you know, we want as many eyes on the property as possible, as many yeah. so that so that flows through for leads and, and whatnot. Our social media, as in the white stag social media, yep. yes, we support the venues. Yes. So our mm. our strategy will involve the various venues we work at. Yeah. Um, but it's not it's not the venue itself with a really targeted campaign or a really sustained yep. um, marketing campaign. But that social media is a is a huge piece. Yeah. Everyone, it's fair to say, every venue does it slightly differently. Of course. Um, we, we notice we've got a decent throughput for each of the venues we have, Yeah. but social media, you can always do it better or there's always something new to try and, you yeah. know, um, increasing more eyes on, on the property. Yeah. We don't offer it as a service to our clients just now. We're not social media people. Yeah. Okay. We cool. outsource our own social media. Yeah. 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 For sure. Ourselves. <laughs> Very so we smart. Well done. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask if you were doing the TikTok dances. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, I could definitely, like for me, looking at your business, I could definitely see that in the future. Like th th as far as the value for, for the venues, you know, like we're already increasing your, you know, your throughput, you're getting so many more leads and everything like that. And then all of a sudden it's like a, a total service that you're offering and we're like, well, cool, we're doing the, the uh, content creation for you and we're doing the social media and we're kind of like building their brands and you're still doing the same for all of your venues, but then all of a sudden all like more and more leads are coming through as well. Yeah. But anyway, I don't know. I was just looking at that. We can definitely, <laughs> we can definitely see it work as well. So yeah. without being on social media, yeah. we can tell when the venues post. Yes. So our inquiries um, can literally go emails going bang, bang, bang. And we go, oh, they've made a post yeah. and then we're on the computers and, and responded to emails immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we definitely see it work and yeah. it's such an important part of the it's business. It's interesting we were saying before, um, like how you're finding that uh, a lot of couples are getting frustrated with vendors because uh, they haven't heard back from their inquiry for like, you know, a couple of weeks. Um, are you guys dealing with much of that or is that kind of select few or like? Uh, from us contacting vendors? Yeah, or? not so much saying that you guys aren't responding because like you guys would be like super onto it. But just like we were saying before we started recording uh, how couples were, you were hearing back from couples saying like, oh, you know, I hit up Joe Blow about photography or yeah, we, catering it, or whatever. And it's like, like. It, it comes up every now and again. And, we, and we've, you know, we've, we've had a discussion amongst us as well. That, you know, the, the inquiry services we offer for venues, we've talked about offering it for vendors as well. Yeah. Um, I, I'd posit that there's a lot of vendors out there who are really good at what they do, photographers, videographers, or whatever it might be. Yeah. Not necessarily great at the response. Business, yeah. Our, our, our systems and our platforms allow that to happen. So it's an area we've spoken about getting involved in helping vendors. Yeah. yeah. Um, not pushed it. Yep. Um, that could just be because they're time poor as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for sure. Not to say they can't do it. But yeah. if you're editing, if you're yeah. doing, you're out on shoots, like you don't have time to be sitting there writing yeah. back to emails. Yeah. So yeah. if somebody can else do it for you, yeah. then it's beneficial oh, to your yeah, business. Definitely. For sure. But, um, yeah, I've been doing this for 13. Oh, sorry, go, go. No, sorry. I was going to say from external industries that I've worked in, uh, an interesting stat is we... <clears throat> um, essentially inquiries coming through our website um, 
those inquiries that are responded to within an hour yep. had a 90% higher chance of converting. I heard that. Sorry about that, yeah. that then if you look at it on a, on a chart of response time versus conversion, the longer you take to respond to a customer, the lower the chances of conversion are. You're, you're essentially picking up the customer when they're hot if you're speaking to them immediately. Yeah. If, they, if you leave that a day or two days, then your customers potentially find someone else who's engaged with them and they've yeah. lost interest. And I think being that like open relationship and communicating as quickly and effectively as possible is incredibly important to gain trust. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's it, we, we talk a lot about in, in our business about customer journey. What is that customer yeah. journey? I mean, it starts from the first inquiry. And, and, and I think you're, you're crazy if you think, from a venue perspective, you're crazy if you think that that inquiry to your venue is the only one they're making. Yeah, yeah. They're making inquiries. Exactly. Generally, it might be a shotgun approach, like, okay, we're getting married in 2025. Yep. Let's just hammer out some inquiries, hit the contact page. Yep. yep. That happens a lot. Um, and as Bruce mentioned, that, that ability um, to respond quickly yep. and start that conversation for us is where we try and emphasize to get that booking for that, for that venue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean it's so right. Like I've made many decisions, uh, where if I'm treated well, you know, respectfully, politely valued, all those types of things, even if it was more expensive, I've probably gone and bought like on a dumb thing. Like I went and bought a pair of vans at a different shop because I didn't get good service from the, from the other sure. place. Yeah. So if you're getting a good experience from the other place, then you're like, we can swindle. And we're probably not talking like, thousands and thousands of dollars you know we're not like you could be looking at one venue that's i'm gonna throw a ball like five grand for one and it's like six grand for another and you thought you were only wanting to spend five here but if this one's you know got good service and blah 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 like it's a trust element as well we find as well so when from the client they've got they're investing a lot of money yeah, exactly. and, and and if we can if we can build that trust with them and it's genuine trust as well yeah. we want to we want to make sure you have the right if the venue's not for you that it's not yep. for you yeah, exactly let's, let's right. Let's get to that quickly. But if you think this is venue for you, let, let's help you yeah. go through the process. We have managed to convert people who have paid deposits at other venues. They've then come through to one of our venues and they've gone, y you guys are onto it. Yeah, yeah, We've, yeah. We, we trust you. We're That's not awesome. really sure over there. We've had some questions and they've forgone deposits to then come across. So that, that's not the norm. Yeah, yet. of course. But we've seen that happen in a handful of times. And that's always encouraging for us. It tells yeah. us, well, we're doing the right thing. Yep. Yeah. We're building that trust. That's awesome. Um, because they're spending a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. And we try and bring and that and that extends to how much conversation we'll have around who who's part of your team. Uh, so we're recommending and one a vendor, you know, caterer, photographer, musician, whatever. We want to know there's a good fit, but we want to know that there's trust there as well. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. They're pretty so much there running their business the same as what you are, essentially. Like well, yeah, I'm on par with much. that. It's a conversation yep. we, we've had a few times where it's like, you know, we'll, we'll talk photography or videography. Like the creative person isn't typically really that great at business. <laughs> and so it's like, I even know a few where it's like their business side of things is shocking. Probably one of the best photographers I know, but yeah. they, like everything else is like, how do you like genuinely how do you get work <laughs> but it's, it's such a balancing act where like we I, i've been doing this 13 years and definitely have ridden the the highs and lows where like i get booked like crazy and i get yep. super busy and the next year i have no bookings because i was so busy <laughs> back here that i got nothing the next year and like joel and i we kind of got like a video editing company and we've just started like we've got admins on for our separate businesses and it's it's crazy how much different like because like we said before as well, like we'll, when, we're, when we're busy and we're getting an inquiry, there isn't that urgency about it. Because you're right. like, I'm good. Like I've got money coming in. I'm all yeah, good. Yeah. And then you don't really pursue it so much. Whereas like if you have the admin team on or someone who actually looks after that, it's always like, no, no, we've got to keep going kind of thing. Yeah. And it's, um, I think that's where it's hard for small business owners. It took me so long to realize like you have to run it like a business. You can't do everything. Yeah. And it sucks like giving money away. But then also like you're going to book so many more jobs yeah. because of that. But it's just hard at the start to kind of like, yeah, pay yeah. for a service essentially that you think you can do yourself, but you can't. It's a common, it's a common small business challenge, <laughs> yeah. really, you know, because you have to wear so many hats. Yeah. Um, and and I and I actually think it's a real, it's a real, um, it, it shows good growth in someone who re who can realize I'm not good at social yeah. media, I'm not good at admin, I'm not good at systems to, yeah. to go get that done. And as you say, focus on what you're good at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it almost feels like. Um, I know, like I've only been doing this, I think six years now. Um, and it almost feels like when you're starting it as a sole trader, like you're, you're like, 
I want to do everything myself. And it almost like you, it's kind of almost e- egotistical. Yeah, you're, you're proud. Like, I, I can do it all. I, I, I'm, I'm the business, <laughs> I'm the social media, I'm the photographer, I'm all these things. Look at how good I am. But then like you see, you know, someone that has all these systems, this person does this, this person does this. And then you almost look at that and you're like, oh shit, like maybe I should do that. <laughs> like, look at all the time that they got yeah. down at the beach. And like, Yeah, and, and it's an interesting, but, and I suppose that's where how new venues have come our way as well. That's For owners sure. realizing... Um, Okay, I've got a wedding venue, but some of the some of the owners we have are, are they've got no wedding industry at, at all. I yeah. mean, um, you know, no background in, in events or weddings. Um, they may have a completely different career background. Yep. And they're realizing, okay, well, I'm not. Yep. I'm not a people person, or yeah. or I'm not good at that. And and I think that, as I said before, that's where we've identified opportunity. The the benefit we have with three um, owners with different lenses is we yep. we have completely different skill set. Yeah. Um, we think very differently. We think yeah, very yeah, okay. differently, yep. yeah. yeah. Which does give us some good, robust, heated arguments yeah, every now and again, which, is, uh, <laughs> which for me is healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it allows us to, to identify opportunity quickly, um, get a different take on what that opportunity might be. But, you know, getting back to the, the wearing all the hats, it, it's business. Business is yeah. business. Yeah. Whether you're an owner of a venue, whether you're an owner of a photography business, yeah. you, you've still got to identify where's the best use of my time. Yes. Yep. And, and where do I invest? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where do I spend money to invest? Yeah. It also gives the owners opportunities to do other things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like if they have other goals that they're yep. trying to achieve, it means they can go concentrate on that, Absolutely. knowing that we can take care of that part of their business yep. for them to go look at a second wedding venue, yep. do something else, yep. do a hobby, whatever yep. it is that yep. they want to do. It just gives them the reassurance that somebody's taking care of yep. their business. Yeah, cool. I think like the real question is how many photographers do you want to take on as a client? Because I know there's probably like 50 <laughs> photographers like, yep, yeah, you're looking after our books. Let's get some leads. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, be in the future. Happy to talk to any of <laughs> We always want to be getting the first call yeah. and uh, seeing, you know, if we can genuinely help people. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so is cool. that something that you would offer is like more like not like coming away from venue or not coming away from venue obviously that's the that's the business uh, but is that something that you guys would look at doing is like helping vendors and stuff out definitely if it's question, been a, yeah. beneficial for everyone involved yep. why not yeah awesome we will speak after this I've, thought, <laughs> I've, spoken, I've spoken to agencies before I'm like I don't want to deal with leads like I love shooting and like yeah. that's even why I like shooting for other companies because I love to get there and shoot the wedding and kind of do that and like yep. the editing and everything but um, like as far as like having someone to deal with leads and do that process, man, I'd pay for that every day of the week. Like it's just, yeah, when I, there's a couple other brands that I work for regularly and they just, um, Maddie is just like, she is like admin and she yeah. looks after the business and she is so good at just like turning over leads because mm. she just gets them on the phone. She's super personable and can just book leads all the time. Um, it's definitely a service worth paying for, mm. I think anyway, but anyway. We hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I also just wanted to touch, um, Lastly, okay, like as far as a new wedding venue coming on board, what's the ideal time? So they own a farm out in the hinterland on the Gold Coast or in Byron or whatever, um, and they want to set up a wedding venue. What's the ideal time for them to contact you as far as going into the management side of things? Oh, as early as possible. As as possible. Yeah, like okay. we we only deal with venues that have got DA okay. and are genuinely interested in being a wedding venue. Yep. We see a lot of people popping up with venues that either don't have the correct DA or, and there's nothing worse than, you know, telling someone they can book a wedding and then not go ahead and have to make cancellations. So the earlier they come to us, we can point them in the right direction with DA, the processes, what's involved, and then, you know, tell them what we can do and the services we offer so that they can potentially become a venue. Um, we're dealing one currently just now, a farm in Gilston that's got a barn on site who are going through the DA process. So that could be another one coming on board on the Gold Coast, which is exciting. Um, Sarabar Estates is relaunching oh, um, awesome. under Rosewood um, oh, awesome. to have a sister venue. Yep. Um, so they're going to go out. Black Marquee, Sarabar Estates, and do something new um, and then you know there's even a potential of one coming on board in Noosa um, in the future 20 minutes from Noosa Head Beautiful. so there's lots of things happening um, yep. behind the scenes as, as well as the five that we're currently working with we're also talking in discussions whether it be venue management plans just wedding consulting yep. just giving them an insight to what we know yeah um, can benefit them. And that's what you were alluding to earlier, like with um, Simon bringing on another venue. 
Like essentially he's not doing that if he's looking after all of his bookings yeah. and doing all that side of things still. Well, he's very heavily involved with Rosewood. Yep. Um, so he does do a lot, yep. um, but we do a lot of the time consuming elements yep. so he can concentrate on other things. Um, he's still running the team there, organizing everything. He does viewings. If he can't do viewings, we step in and do them for him. Yeah. If he can't be there on the day, uh, venue management will will fill that hole oh, amazing. and fill in. So it depends what the owners, yep. what they want to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay then. Yeah. What, what does like a, this is probably way too broad of a question but like is there a typical viewing for a client like is it for example if someone wanted to come and check out tall trees is it like when they rock up they get champagne on it you know what i mean like what's what's yeah, kind yeah, of the run through for a bride yeah, so i mean we uh, each of us will have a different style yeah uh, each of the venue owners have a different style um the way i approach viewings is is the same i would even talking to the venue owners as well it's you know you you you, you, you try and get a bit of information at them first in terms yep. of what are you looking for. Champagne, not so much. No, yep. that's not. That's <laughs> <laughs> like a whiskey or drink. Yeah. Is that, yeah. <laughs> if it's an open day, then maybe, yeah, we might throw them a drink. But yes, <laughs> there's, not, there's not gallons of champagne out of that. Yeah. We, um, we don't get them drunk and hopefully we sign at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, just sign you up. <laughs> um, but it, it's, I mean, you've got, a, you've got a really short space of time to, yeah. to build a bit of trust. So I, I'm generally asking a lot of questions straight off the bat. Very, not not aggressively, just yeah. while we're wandering through. And you'll try and get a bit of information, you know, if we can get from them, you know, what other venues have they looked at? Yep. Uh, number of guests, um, style of wedding they like. Gen and and um, whether, um, you know, sort of how far the, in the journey of looking they are. Yeah. yeah. From that, you can generally, you can get a fair idea about where they're sort of up to. Yeah, for uh, sure. And then it's very factual, but we, yep. we're very open. We allow all our guests to take videos photographs yeah hammer us with questions yeah i always prefer doing viewings with family as well yeah because okay. you get a lot of good questions that way as well yeah as opposed to someone books it and then all the questions come in yeah. what about this what about that? so you can you can cover a lot of stuff off early yeah um, that makes sense because i'm like i come from a sales background and we always i was selling cars and it was always like you didn't want like just the wife or the husband to come in and then the, like you wanted kind of them as a team. Yeah. Because then you don't want to, like, if you're just dealing with yourself and you're like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to take all this information. I'm going to go back at home and talk to my partner. I know, yeah. Like, you're probably, <laughs> you're not going to sell them a car. So <laughs> not that we want to make it as seedy as car sales. Um, no, but you do want, you want, to, you want that information to impart yeah. quickly, you know. Uh, and, and sometimes it's different. You know, sometimes you, you get a good read on someone. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you won't. Sometimes people are yeah. Yeah, yeah. closed shops. Yeah, and you can never tell. Sometimes they'll be the one that book, and the one yeah. that are sort of super hot to trot, or just you never hear from them again. So yeah, it, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. We do find as well that people can open up to us. Yeah, because they know we're at multiple venues, or yeah, they might yeah. see us at Maroon Hill Estate, and then we're yeah. doing a viewing the next week at High Garden Estate, and yeah. they, oh, you're here. Yeah, but then we have that rapport with them that we can sort of answer their questions. I think there's sometimes when couples see owners yes. they don't want to say the negatives or mm -hmm. the positives yep. or because they think they might hurt their feelings yeah. but for us we'd much rather you said it's not for us yeah. or you know and be honest same with email inquiries if, if the venue's not for you yeah just write a short email back and we can then you yep. know archive that lead and, it, and it's yep. done that's yeah, where yeah. you know if it's sitting in the system we're like oh, i wonder if they're still interested yep. um you know, the more, the more honest people can be yeah. with us, definitely, we can help them. Like we have some couples that have looked at 37 venues <laughs> when they're coming through. And you're just like, that is so many weekends wasted yeah. where you guys have been traveling from Byron to the Sunshine yeah. Coast and inland to look for the perfect spot. Um, so if we can help them by oh, giving right, yeah. them some information yeah, quick. Exactly. Um, you know, they might get some weekends back to themselves yeah. so they can start planning <laughs> that, their wedding. They're probably the couple that eloped or something. <laughs> you're like, no, I'm done. See where we'll be. Yeah. We're going to Europe. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. I think we're almost going to have to wrap this one up. It's been a while. Um, yeah, well. Is there anything else you want to kind of broach on before we wrap this up? As far as... No, I suppose the only other thing to, to emphasize that for, for us as a business, what, we, we can be sort of in the shadows some just, or behind the scenes if you like, but we want just want to let everybody know all the venues that we work at, we... Come one, come all. Yep. yep. Planners, stylists, wh wh whatever the vendor, whatever the business is, if you think you can add value to that venue, yep. It is. There is not a closed door. We are not. We're not sucking up that business. We want you guys to come, put a spotlight on the venue because our focus is on getting that venue, venue. booked for yeah, the client beautiful. and for the owner. 
Yeah, amazing. Perfect. Well, honestly, we, all, oh, we also know that like if we've got a good team around us, like I've heard you say it on the podcast, when you see someone's name that you know is reliable, mm -hmm. yep. you just go, okay. Oh, okay. Like, and it gives you that instant relief. You know that's taken care yep. of. It's one less concern. Yep. And that's what we're trying to do. Build the best team for the client. Yep. And that can be from a budget point of view, service yeah, exactly. point of view, whatever that may be, that they get the wedding of their dreams. Yep. Definitely. Oh, amazing. Well, lads, thank you so much for coming thank on. You. Really thank appreciate you, you taking you. the time. Appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you at like 14 different venues <laughs> by the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Awesome. No, Thanks well, so much, guys. guys. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. you. Thanks for tuning in to the Wedco Podcast. We're dropping a fresh episode every week featuring industry professionals dishing out the wedding wisdom you need to turn those dreams into reality. Make sure you are following us on social media. You have those notifications turned on so we can help plan your wedding day. Your dream wedding day just got a whole lot easier. Thanks for listening.